It's Thursday, January 31st. I'm Hillary Donnell, and this is the Azure Weekly Report. All right. Okay. On Monday night, Exeter TV had a lively discussion with several current and future Exeter TV producers. Executive producer Bob Goacki led the group on a tour of our studios and offices, answering questions and giving an update on the station and what we're doing for 2019. But uh, I'm Bob Lewacki, so I help uh, run the station. This is uh, Hillary and Tim. Uh, they're videographers here. So this is our new production office, we're calling it. Uh, we recently moved in here, um, as I was telling them, like a, a little over a year ago. Um, we have three channels uh, here in Exeter. Uh, government, Channel 22, so that's all board meetings and stuff that we usually handle all that stuff because um, it's like official town stuff. Um, there's the school's channel, which is channel 13. It's uh, now called Blue Hawk Media, I think. But they're always going through rebranding. Um, we just rebranded as Exeter TV, like to be all three channels. And that includes our third channel, which is channel 98. Channel 98 is really a public platform for citizens to show, you know, whatever they want. We're, we're like what we call a peg access station. So that's, you know, <coughs> public access, education, and government. Uh, and there's lots of these stations all across New Hampshire. And they're all real, uh, different. Some are completely run by towns like Exeter. Um, well, the school has their channel. Other ones are completely run by the school, all three channels. Others are cooperative. Some are nonprofits. Um, some are a combination of the three. Um, so we're unique in that we're a, a completely run by the town. So we're all town employees. Through public access, we can get a lot of coverage of the whole state that um, you know, WMUR can't do. They can't tell the local stories um, that we can. Uh, and with the help of, you know, folks like you, we can tell even more uh, local stories and really get that out. Even if you didn't make it to our community producer and volunteer night, we have more upcoming events for aspiring videographers. Here's more on our videography workshops. Starting February 15th, Exeter TV will host a series of videography workshops covering how to plan a shot, set up an interview, and so much more. Whether you are looking to take your first step into producing your own show, or you just want to create better home movies, Exeter TV's workshops can give you the skill and confidence to be a better videographer. Learn how to set up a shot, how to film an interview, and how to broadcast live with Exeter TV's videography workshop starting February 15th. Speaking of upcoming events, Parks and Recreation Director Greg Bison is here with seasonal offerings from his department. Hi, I'm Greg Bison, Exeter Parks and Recreation Director. You may think we're not busy in the wintertime, but we have a lot going on. And if you ever want to see a competitive game, youth basketball is well underway. We have grades pre-K all the way to grades 8. We're excited to announce the start of our new senior council. Melissa Roy, our assistant director, has been pivotal in creating a senior council with 25 different agencies to meet the needs of the Exeter residents. We also have a variety of different senior programs going on. One is our senior walking program. Thank you to the Exeter YMCA for hosting us. We bring seniors from 277 Water Street and we get them out and active in the wintertime. We also have a craft hour going on at 277 Water Street that will provide crafts. Uh, and thank you Exeter Hospital for our sponsorship of those two programs as well. 
For those who are also looking for a fun evening out, we have our sweetheart stands. This is open to the whole family. Come out and enjoy the town hall like you've never seen it before. Dancing, refreshments, and entertainment. The Sweetheart Dance will be February 18th from 6 to 8 p.m. right here in the Exeter Town Hall. You can find Exeter Parks and Recreations on Facebook.com at Exeter Parks and Recreation NH. Okay. This Saturday, the town will hear and have input on the current warrant articles. The select board and budget committee will be in attendance as well as several heads of department. With more information, we have town manager, Russ Dean. This is the Exeter Weekly Report. I'm Hillary Donnell, here with town manager, Russ Dean. Thanks for having me. Okay. Uh, so, the delivery session is this Saturday and there might be a lot of things our, our citizens don't know yet. Uh, what is the basic idea of what a deliberative session is? Okay, so the deliberative session is basically the annual meeting of the town. So it's the uh, opportunity for people to come and participate in their government. Uh, what we do is uh, we have an annual town meeting warrant that we put together that has a bunch of different articles on it that cover a variety of different topics. Uh, in order to participate in the deliberative session, you have to be a registered voter, uh, and you check in and take your seat and let the, you know, the morning commences at about 9 o'clock is when the meeting actually starts. Uh, but we have a, a warrant of town business to go through. Uh, the town deliberative session is actually the legislative body of the town, so they don't make final decisions on warrant articles at that meeting, but they can discuss things and amend things. Uh, like dollar amounts and smaller things within each Warren article. So it, uh, it actually has its roots way back in the 1700s, uh, sort of the hear ye, hear ye thing where you go around, tack up, there's a town meeting being warned and that sort of thing. And over the years, it's evolved to this. So uh, it's also our first session of town meeting. So if you happen to miss Saturday, uh, February 2nd at deliberative session, you have another chance to go to the polls, which is March 12th, and vote, actually vote in the ballot box on all the Warren articles. Is so. there a process for people coming in? Can anyone just go wander in and see the meeting? Or? So how that works is people will come to uh, go to the high school, mm -hmm. right, and recommend uh, showing up about maybe quarter to nine in the morning. Uh, you go through the front door, take a left, head toward the auditorium, and when you go into the high school auditorium, you'll see a table there with our uh, supervisors of the checklist, who are actually also elected officials, and they uh, have a voter checklist with them. You go over and see them, and they'll search for your name, and if, as long as your name appears uh, and you have your ID, they'll give you a card, and when it comes time to vote during the meeting, you can raise that card, you know, yay or nay, depending upon how you want to vote on a particular amendment or issue. Mm -hmm. So that's basically how it works. Um, you do have to be a registered voter of the town to participate. So what I recommend if there's people watching this that are saying, I'd like to participate, but I don't know if I'm registered to vote, come down, check with our supervisors of the checklist, because as long as you can prove residency, uh, they can register you same day to participate in the process. Is there, can you give me a, an impression of the like breadth of the topics that will be covered? What sort of things are? So uh, yeah, there, there are many different topics. Um, basically the, the core of it is the town's operating budget for the year. Uh, and then we also have our water and sewer budgets that are separate articles uh, that are uh, voted on separately. And then we have a series of articles that have been put on the warrant through the select board process, and we also have four petition articles. So um, the operating budget and the water sewer budgets are basic town business. Once we get past that, uh, there are some pretty interesting ones on uh, the warrant this year. We have an article that deals with improving intersections in town, and that's been a big issue this year and for a lot of years that people have come forward and said, you know, I really think these intersections need work and so like Pine Front and Linden Street is one, uh, Railroad Avenue, Winter Street's another one where we, we get a lot of concerns about sight lines and people uh, being able to traverse our town streets 
easily at these intersections. So we've put on a warrant that would be $50,000 to uh, try to address some of those issues at those problem intersections. So I think that will get some good discussion. Um, we have one that's a public safety facility staffing and data analysis. So we have some major issues within our public safety operations about facilities. What are we going to do in the future? Are we going to have a combined facility or are we going to have separate police and fire stations? And where are they going to be? And there, there are a lot of issues around planning and trying to figure that out. And so one of the articles asked for $50,000 to hire some consulting help to assist us with that and evaluate alternatives. And I, I think that that's a good long-term article for the town to consider and hopefully that and I think that will generate some good discussion too so is there anything else you think uh, Exeter citizens need to know about the deliberative session well I think people if they want to read up before the deliberative session I always recommend that and we try to make it as easy as possible if you go to exeternh.gov there's a button right on the front of our town website called town meetings you can click on that and that will bring up the town warrant that I'm holding in my hand. Uh, we'll also bring up the town budget uh, as well. And so you can look right on that, uh, right on that web page and uh, download the PDF document. You can review it. And then if uh, you're prepping for a deliberative session and you want to come with any questions, uh, we're happy to hear those. But that's how you get all the information. And this is a great time to say that Exeter TV is going to be streaming the deliberative session live this Saturday. So catch that. It's Throwback Thursday. Here are some videos we posted in January 2017 and 2018. First up, our coverage of Winter Storm Grayson. Here's your final reminder that the deliberative session starts at 9 a.m. at Exeter High School this Saturday. Exeter TV will stream the session live. When you've returned from the session, we recommend a warm drink and Exeter TV. We'll go outside for you. Check out Exeter Outdoors, Outside and In with the Cook's Cook, or our Economic Development Show. Or head to the Exeter Historical Society YouTube and see their brand new episode of the History Minute on the Exeter Town Hall. Thank you for watching. Here's your weekend forecast. Friday will be sunny with a high of 23 degrees and a low of eight degrees. Keep the family out of the cold at Team's first Friday family movie night. Head to the Town Hall at 6 p.m. to see Sword in the Stone. Saturday will be cloudy with a high of 34 degrees and a low of 19 degrees. Sunday will be mostly cloudy with a high of 37 degrees and a low of 28 degrees. Monday will be partly cloudy with a high of 51 degrees and a low of 37 degrees. 